Welcome to this ASNEN Professional Development Webinar. I'm Patrick Groot and I'll be moderating this session. The ASNEN Steering Committee would like to thank Boringa Ingelheim, the Stroke Society of Australasia and Stroke SA for their generous support of the ASNEN initiatives. Thanks also to the National Stroke Foundation and the Victorian Stroke Clinical Network for helping promote our webinars as well as to the NSF for making these recordings available up on Inform Me. So don't forget to check out our website on www.asnen.org where you can learn about future education events including our future webinars and um, involvement with some of the conferences coming up. So to today's webinar, the topic for today is Discharge Care Plans for Stroke presented by Liz Mackey and Catherine David. Liz is a stroke nurse practitioner at Western Health in Melbourne and a member of the ASNEN Steering Committee and Catherine is the, is the Stroke Connect Team Leader at the National Stroke Foundation. Thanks Liz and Catherine. Thank you Pat. Um, could I just get a quick, um, yes you can hear me from someone from one of the hospitals. Thank you, Casey. I can see you typing there. Beautiful. All right. So, just a little bit more about ASNEM before we start. Um, as Pat said, um, it's the Acute Stroke Nurse Education Network, and our vision is to facilitate the delivery of evidence based acute stroke care by encouraging stroke specific education and providing network opportunities for Australian acute stroke nurses to, provide, uh, to improve patient outcomes. Um, you can join ASNEM, it's free, and we, we welcome. Um, all nurses, and if you're not a nurse, we also welcome you because we're nice. <laughs> so, um, Catherine and I um, will be looking at discharge care plans for stroke today. Um, the ASNEN group um, meets um, once a year to look at our plans for education um, for the next year, and we base it on um, what people want to know, so what we hear from um, you, the nurses, and what we think is important, but also what um, is um, um, topics of interest or topics that are important from um, things like the National Stroke Foundation audit. And last year, um, fortunately, just before our meeting, the results of the National Stroke Acute Audit came out, and we saw that actually in Australia, only 44% of patients were discharged from hospital with no care plan. So what we want to do today um, is have a look at what is a um, discharge care plan. Uh, why do patients want discharge care plans? Um, we hope to review some interesting hospital discharge care plans and then um, we also want to um, look at what to do to help deliver discharge care plans. Now, um, Catherine will be looking um, at the presentation um, from the National Stroke Foundation's perspective and I'll be looking at it from um, a nurse working in a hospital um, and linking in with other hospitals as well. So, I will hand over to Catherine to start from the national perspective. Great, thanks Liz. Um, so as Liz mentioned, I just want to touch first of all on, on exactly what is care planning so that we're all on the same page about what we're talking about um, and give you a bit of an overview about why it's, in, why it's important, why we're harping on about it um, and particularly why, it, why it's sort of part of the audit. I also want to talk about how we're doing um, on the ground from I guess an audit perspective, what we know from the data and also what's obviously available to support care planning. So where do we go from here in terms of improving care planning? And um, Liz is then going to touch on um, some interesting care plans to give you, I guess, a few ideas and open up, um, open up, I guess, where we go from here. So I'll put this uh, slide up that shows the definition from the Acute Stroke Clinical Care Standards um, that was developed last year. I think a lot of you will have come across uh, this one and I've put this up because I think it really gives a very nice definition of what care planning is and, and um, um, the components that could be included in a care plan. I'm just going to pull out bits from this definition so it's um, something that's done before the uh, patient leaves hospital and they're involved in the development of the care plan. So it's an individualised document for them. Um, the point of the care plan is to describe ongoing care that the patient will, leave, will require after they leave hospital. So importantly, it's not um, just a document that goes through what's happened in hospital, but it's more focusing on the care and that someone's going to require um, to really give themselves the best possibility of, 
of recovering and, and have good support after they leave hospital. In terms of the components in a, in a care plan, um, it could include rehab goals, lifestyle modifications, medicines needed to manage risk factors and any equipment that the patient might need as well as follow-up appointments and contact details for ongoing support services available in the community. Another really important point is that the plan is provided to the patient before they leave hospital and is also provided to the GP or ongoing clinical provider. Um, so it's different to the discharge sort of, I guess, plan that gets sent to the GP that really goes through the very medical side of things um, about what's happened in hospital. Um, this is really related to the ongoing care for the patient. And the clinical guidelines um, do really outline care planning and what's involved in a care plan as well. So there's some points up here about what a safe discharge includes. So um, going through post-discharge needs with patients and family, um, arranging future treatment meds, equipment and services, training of carers, and then writing to the patient's GP. And the clinical guidelines also go through this really crucial point that the patient has a written care plan when they leave hospital. Um, so it's not some, simply a document that sits in the patient records and then it's done. It really needs to get to the patient so that they've got a copy of what's going on. If you're interested, I'd really strongly encourage you to have a look at the care planning areas of the clinical guidelines because um, they do give some really good ideas about uh, what might be included in a patient's written care plan. So why, why are we talking about care planning and why is it important? Um, we hear time and time again, unfortunately, from stroke survivors and carers of this sort of black hole that people experience when they go home from hospital. And I've just put a couple of quotes up here. I felt like I didn't have enough information as to who I could call or talk to. I just thought if I could get home, things would get back to normal, but they didn't. So unfortunately, really, really common themes. Um, stroke survivors often report that they're very well supported in the hospital environment and they're very happy with that aspect of things. But unfortunately, with the nature of stroke and the um, many issues that crop up, people feel really isolated once they go home. And I think there's a really common theme, particularly from stroke survivors that go home directly from acute, so you know the ones that are perhaps on the better end of the, the spectrum. Um, there's this often this theme that people think that if they can just get home, that things will go back to how they were before their stroke. Um, so it's all, I guess sometimes almost a little bit of a denial about what's, what's ahead. Um, and they're the patients often that we find, um, you know, very keen to get out of hospital and so it can be often quite a short discharge or a short length of stay. And um, when they get home, they find all of a sudden things are actually a lot more difficult than they anticipated. So really care planning should be done for all patients, um, even the ones that sort of think that they're, they're doing okay. Okay, so this slide goes through, um, I guess it's some other data that we have about why care planning is important. We know that the needs of stroke survivors, from the needs of stroke survivors report, um, that there's a huge amount of unmet needs um, in the community of stroke survivors once they've gone home from hospital. And we also know from OSCAR data that um, depression is, is a huge issue amongst stroke survivors. Um, and certainly we know that um, obviously because of the, the number of unmet needs that can really contribute to, to people experiencing depression. I've just put at the bottom here um, some data about our, from our Stroke Connect follow-up service. Um, the follow-up service is from uh, Queensland where we deliver phone calls to stroke survivors uh, once they've gone home to check in and see how they're going. Um, and from that evaluation that we've done of that service, We've actually found that 61% of stroke survivors that we spoke to report feeling overwhelmed after leaving hospital. So there's a, a real need there for more help and support and care planning is really critical to improving that picture. In terms of the formal literature regarding discharge planning and care planning, um, we know that um, from the literature that we can see improved patient and family education outcomes, 
there's been possible reduced length of stay reported, um, improved self-management through goal setting, um, so really that focus on um, self-management to improve someone's recovery once they've left hospital. Um, reduced hospital readmission rates, and look, you can certainly see why if someone's well supported at home um, and their needs are being met through a, an effective care plan, then they're, they're less likely to go back into hospital. Uh, and then, of course, um, the positive effects on health-related quality of life. So, on the back of that, how are we actually doing on the ground with care planning? Well, if we have a look at the audit data, unfortunately, um, things have, have really not changed over the past few years with care planning. So we're still seeing that this is um, a major challenge, I think, for hospitals. And um, it's, it's an incredibly complex area to, to address on the ward. So if we look at this data here, this data basically shows um, the proportion of patients um, for whom a care planning was deemed appropriate. So it excludes patients like palliative care patients. Um, and it looks at those patients going home at, um, for, for whom care plan was developed um, that outlined post-discharge care. And you can see here from 2009 through to 2015, the audit results, things really haven't improved, unfortunately. The good news is that stroke unit care has a positive influence on uh, whether or not patients receive a, a care plan uh, before they go home. So this um, middle bar here shows, um, so it shows quite nicely the difference between um, stroke units and non-stroke unit patients and the proportion of patients that actually receive the care plan. Attention all staff, response, stand down blue. Like a... um, I've put up this slide here just to kind of illustrate that whilst, um, whilst we know that stroke unit care does improve things, there's a huge number of barriers on the, on the ward to actually uh, supporting care planning. So it's a, really, it's a really tricky area and look at this slide just basically shows that there's, there's a lot of things to consider in terms of improving care planning. Uh, so I think it's something that we, we it's, it's not going to necessarily change overnight, but it's a matter of taking steps in the right direction to improve this area. We know that on acute wards, um, we're dealing with an interdisciplinary team. Um, there's often a lot of uh, processes that are involved. We're bound by guidelines and it's an area where look, we're really time poor. So. Um, getting change on the ward is, is, is quite a difficult area. When we speak with health professionals about care planning and trying to understand a bit more about the barriers to care planning on the ground, um, we hear from acute staff that um, they often have a lot of difficulty with goal setting and I think that that's, there's been a lot of work done in rehab around goal setting but it's quite a tricky area for acute. Um, so issues like who has responsibility on the ward for goal setting, staff often report reduced confidence with goal setting techniques and reduced awareness of, of what goals can be commenced in acute and how to sort of plan for those goals after someone leaves the acute ward. Certainly time's a major issue and um, the short length of stay is a barrier which, which obviously contributes to this time issue. The other thing that we heard from clinicians around care planning was that there's a lack of acute to rehab flow on or consistency. So the collaboration between acute and rehab can often um, be less than ideal and that can be a barrier to care planning because uh, sometimes processes are started on acute and then different processes are put in place in rehab. Um, there's also this issue of, of duplication of documentation, so really the need to sort of streamline documentation to support care planning. So what's actually around to support care planning? I'll go through um, a little bit in terms of ideas from the literature and also National Stroke Foundation supports um, and services that you can look at to, to support your care planning on the ward. And then Liz is going to touch on um, some really interesting examples of care planning as a bit of food for thought. I think my first message really has to be the fact that it starts in acute. So um, we do often hear this theme from health professionals, I think, that um, 
you know, care planning will um, will be done on rehab, and that's where it sits. Um, we know that rehab wards do do a great job with care planning, but I wanted to put this up just to, just to show you with this green and purple section of the the pie that. Um, a huge proportion of patients go home from acute and don't go to inpatient rehab. So it's crucial that care planning is started on acute to make sure that we're picking up this large proportion of patients that do go directly home from acute. Um, quite a lot of those patients being discharged home won't have much support and we do find that they often fall in a bit of a hole once they're at home. In terms of the literature, what's actually in a good care plan and some suggestions for getting things started? Um, Kripalani um, suggests a few sort of tips for, for clinicians. So the first thing is um, making sure that you're supplementing verbal information with other materials. So for instance, giving handouts and illustrations. And this is where My Stroke Journey, our consumer resource from the Stroke Foundation can come in to support this really nicely. Um, so My Stroke Journey is basically designed to support those fantastic conversations that you're having with patients. Um, it's high quality written information and you can use that as a, a prop when you're going through education with patients. And then patients have that information in writing to refer back to. Avoid jargon. Make sure that you're not rushing through things. And there's a real importance of repeating information throughout the admission. Um, I think what often tends to happen is, um, particularly with the shorter lengths of stay, things get left to the day of discharge and then all of a sudden patients and family members are bombarded with a whole lot of information about um, going home. So there's not this opportunity to repeat information. So I think the key is starting early on, as soon as possible, to really thinking about where this patient's heading and how can they be best supported right from the very start of when they arrive into hospital. Focus on goals and self-care at home. So it's not just about obviously getting patient, patients out the door, but what's going to happen at home and, and what are their actual goals at home rather than just goals for getting them out the door at hospital. Another really good suggestion is the teach back suggestion. So asking family and um, patients to actually um, sort of teach back, so talk back what, um, what they understand from a conversation rather than giving a whole lot of information straight across the, to the patient in a one-way sort of conversation and then at the end sort of saying, do you have any questions? Because you will probably um, get a, a bit of a blank look, I think, back from, from patients, unfortunately. Or they might say, no, I don't have any questions, um, but they might not have taken on board anything that you've said. So teach back is really important to be able to actually um, understand what information your patient's taken on board. It's useful for retention because they're having to think about what they've just heard and, and then say it back to you. And then you can work out if there's any holes in information that they, they haven't actually taken on board. And the final um, tip here from Kripalani was to um, offer telephone follow-up. Um, so following up stroke survivors once they've gone home. And again, um, the Stroke Foundation's follow-up service is, is a really useful adjunct here. So many of you will have heard of the follow-up service. It's a service where our health professionals call stroke survivors once they've gone home to follow them up um, and, and really check in and offer support and advice at that point in time. So the program has been running really successfully in Queensland for the last few years and um, we're now looking at rolling it out across Victoria and New South Wales um, just based on our, our current funding and hoping to scale it up, up nationally. So that's a, a very nice adjunct to your care planning. So from the Stroke Foundation, I've talked a little bit about follow-up and my stroke journey. We, we basically have developed a suite of resources, I guess, um, that patients can um, use at different times in their, in their journey. I'll focus on My Stroke Journey um, first of all because it's a resource that's designed um, not just purely for sort of education as a handout but really to support care planning on the ward. And we've gone through a bit of a journey with My Stroke Journey um, in terms of how we started with the resource to making some major changes to the resource very recently to try and better support care planning. So 
My Straight Journey booklet, if we look at the evaluation from what health professionals think of the booklet, um, we've had really good feedback that it has introduced sort of new education processes on the ward, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we want. So some quotes from health professionals here. The booklet has helped me formalise and better structure my consultations with stroke survivors. Previously, there was no process for making sure everyone had stroke education. Now there is. We did find, however, um, and many of you have come across a separate care plan template that was in the previous version of the My Stroke Journey packs. So there was the booklet um, as well as the care plan template which was designed to be used on the ward with health professionals um, so that a patient had a sort of written care plan when they went home. Um, and unfortunately when we went back and evaluated the success of the care plan, we found that it was quite a difficult document for health professionals to use on the ward and there was a lot of challenges with um, taking up that, that document. So we found that um, the, the majority of uh, health professionals were not using the care plan at all and really out of the hospitals that we surveyed, um, there weren't really any clinicians that were completing all of the care plan all of the time sort of consistently. Um, so some, we did a whole lot of work in terms of identifying the barriers and this is just a really good example. The risk factors and goal setting components cause some anxiety for staff. So some of the templates were seen as quite complex to fill out um, and perhaps were actually creating a barrier to, to the care planning rather than facilitating it. Um, so it was quite clear to us after this evaluation that we needed to really look at our templates and what we could do to better support care planning on the ward. So we went back to sites and did a whole lot of further consultation to work out what sites thought of where to from, from here. We tested the idea of potentially having um, splitting up the care plan into downloadable templates because we'd heard from sites that sometimes they had some processes in place and not others. Um, so a bit of a sort of pick and choose model where uh, hospital sites could actually um, pick what uh, different aspects of the care plan they wanted and then print those out and use them with patients. There was good feedback about that when we talked to health professionals but um, this real risk was identified from clinicians that they probably wouldn't go on to print things out and look that makes perfect sense I think in a time poor environment when um, it's just one more thing to do we needed to, it was clear that we need to make things as easy as possible um, and Clinicians really liked the idea of being able to order resources in hard copy that are ready to go. So we had this suggestion from a lot of sites actually that we should merge the care plan template into the booklet um, because health professionals were often going through the booklet with, with patients and they're circling and they're writing in things and they're jotting things down. Um, so they're already starting to use the, the booklet as a bit of a workbook. Um, they wanted the sort of care plan integrated in there so that it really supported the flow of discussion rather than having to sort of go on and use a whole different template um, which, which potentially was a duplication across two resources. So we gave it a go. We integrated the care plan template into the booklet and then piloted it with sites just to see whether it was successful before we went forward. Um, so we managed to get 12 sites to pilot 140 booklets um, to give it a really, really good test run. Um, and look, we had fantastic feedback from clinicians, which was great. So um, some of the feedback here, much better than the old booklets, much simpler to complete. The goals section is certainly much better. With the templates that we migrated into the into the My Stroke Journey booklet, um, we made sure that the, the care plan sections sit with relevant information. So for instance, um, a very, very simple goal setting template sits with the goals and rehabilitation information. Um, and there's a very simple risk factor tick sheet um, that can be completed that sits with the risk factor information. So really supporting the flow of education. There's another quote here, I like the fact that in the risk factor section we can just tick the risk factors and then write notes about each one, for example blood pressure range. Um, one piece of feedback that was really interesting that we had was that um, some clinicians had trouble finding the care plan sections in the booklet and it was clear that clinicians wanted to obviously be able to flip to the care plan sections straight away, know exactly where the care plan sections were in the My Stroke Journey booklet. So in the new version that we've just launched, we've made sure that the care plan sections are in the booklet in relevant sections 
um, that they're very simple to complete, so really supporting um, clinicians to go in and have a go at care planning and that they can be found really easily. So they've been highlighted in light blue throughout the booklet so you can, you can get straight to the care plan sections. I've just come back to this slide with our supports just to touch on the other things for those of you who don't know. Um, so we've talked quite a bit about my stroke journey, uh, uh, I guess a, a, um, a really important resource to use on the ward to support care planning. It's also Enable Me, which is our online hub for stroke survivors and carers, so a really important support to let patients know about before they go home from hospital. Stroke Connections is our newsletter for stroke survivors and carers. Um, it's a free newsletter. They can sign up on our website or they can give us a call on Stroke Line, which is our inbound telephone um, helpline that's staffed by health professionals. So stroke survivors and also family members can give us a call at any point in their journey. Um, and this really gets around this problem that we hear from stroke survivors that um, they, they, they want someone to be able to call on if they get stuck. Um, and so that's a really important part of a care plan is making sure that people know who to call um, if, they, if they do want to speak with someone once they've gone home. And then the final one here that I've talked a bit about is follow up. Um, the outbound phone service where we call stroke survivors that have been referred to us um, and make sure that they're doing okay at home and really make sure that they're well supported. So before I hand over to Liz, I've just put in a bit of a, bit of a plug for our new Inform Me website that um, Pat mentioned earlier. Um, this has just been launched this week, so it's very, very fresh. Um, it's basically a free online hub for stroke clinicians and it's designed to be a bit of a one-stop shop, so it houses everything that you might need um, as a clinician when you go online for, for resources and support. It's important in the context of care planning because there's a huge number of resources on there to support care planning. Um, and um, it, particularly in the My Stroke Journey module, you'll find resources about motivational interviewing, so really important for understanding um, how to have those goal setting discussions with patients. Um, there's resources about how to have risk factor modification discussions with patients. Um, so a lot of resources on there, as well as information about My Stroke Journey itself. Um, there's another number of other features of the site, so you can go on and have a look at audit data for your hospital and see how your hospital's tracking in different areas. Um, a huge number of professional development modules, which are obviously fantastic for continuing professional development. And um, the other really important aspect, which I, I really like, is the fact that you can share information and resources um, on the site. So it gives healthcare networks the ability to see what other health networks, what fantastic work other healthcare networks are doing. Um, and you can share resources on there and also ask questions of other clinicians. So really sort of collaborative um, process to improving care across, across the health system. Uh, so the website's there, do go and have a look. That's um, it for me, but I'm gonna hand over to Liz who's gonna go through some really interesting examples of, of care plans now. Catherine, if people want to get more information, um, if they're not using My Stroke Journey yet, do they just call the National Stroke Foundation and they'll send a rep out or get someone to get in touch? Yep. Absolutely. We would really, really love to hear from you. Um, look, uh, you can just email. Uh, we've got basically set up a new email address for any My Stroke Journey inquiries. So it's msj at strokefoundation.com.au. So if your site is interested in ordering um, or you want to ask some questions, um, perhaps get a bit of implement implementation support if you're already ordering but you need a bit of a bit of a boost, um, just send us an email msj at strokefoundation.com.au and we'll work out then the best project officer in your state to help, um, help support that. All right, so um, when I was um, thinking about this topic of discharge care plans, it was like, you know, working out with the group what we do and talking to Catherine and we're like, yeah, and we can ring all these hospitals and um, find out what they're doing. Um, sorry, John H, not sure what is happening, but we're getting an echo on the audio. Is it getting better?
Nope. I'm um, not too sure. We're talking into a handset. Um, if it's still an issue, we can try it. Oh, someone else is saying it's fine. So I think I'm not too sure what's going on, whether it's at your end and you have to mute something. Mm. Any suggestions, Pat? It might be a local issue if you've got um, speaker and audio on the phone going at the same time, um, speaker via computer, that could be an issue. Um, but what you can do is um, if you're on audio via phone, dial star zero and that will um, attach you to um, assistance at Redback Conferencing and they might be able to sort it out for you. Okay, okay. John H? Yeah, um, you might have to um, type that in. I'm not sure if um, John heard that answer because he looks like he's disconnecting. Anyhow, we'll continue on. Um, so yeah, we were um, quite excited about finding out what other hospitals were doing and we thought this would be a lovely journey, finding out you know, um, about all these wonderful care plans that are actually being used. But actually we um, did a bit of a ring around and we've spoken to lots of people and not many people are using their own care plans. Um, some people are using the MyStreet Journey one. So actually this um, presentation today is really, really good to promote what is out there. And if you're not using anything, we hope that this um, does help you with um, moving forward with um, discharge care plans. Um, however, um, I did speak to Casey Hare at um, Ballarat Health Service who are going to be setting up very soon a um, electronic um, discharge care plan. So Ballarat's a regional Victorian um, centre. Um, they're involved in um, the Victorian Stroke Telemedicine Project and part of their um, telemedicine project in, um, includes the setting up of a stroke data registry which is OSCAR, many, many of you might have heard of OSCAR, um, which involves prospective data collection. Now, um, after the presentation, if you've got any questions to Casey about their electronic um, discharge care plans um, that they're working on, um, you're very welcome to um, send Casey an email, so her email's there. Um, but she is online and listening and she'd be able to um, type in any answers if you have any specific questions for her at the end. Anyhow, um, Casey noted that at Ballarat they have um, a philosophy of collect once used many times, so they collect data just once instead of lots of different people collecting lots of different pieces of data and then they use it many times. So I'll explain um, what they mean by that. So um, with their plan for um, discharge patient care plan, which will be coming soon, um, it will be an electronic form or an e-form for stroke data entry and lots of staff will be able to enter the data and they'll use lots of electronic forms uh, sorry, and lots of forms will be generated from the one set of data. So they're keeping in mind that they need to um, meet the stroke clinical registry data needs, but also local requirements. And part of the, um, by entering the data, they'll be able to get out things like the patient's discharge summary and a patient discharge care plan. Um, so their discharge care plans and, and um, it meets a lot of the um, requirements that um, the National Stroke Foundation and the clinical guidelines recommend for patients. So any patient who's discharged home, um, including those patients who have rehab home but not those going to inpatient rehab, um, they'll be able to give them information that's um, got individual individualised risk factor identification and education. They'll um, be able to click on um, boxes which has a template for describing conditions, for example um, atrial fibrillation but it'll be in a patient friendly um, uh, manner. Um, there'll be um, links that the multidisciplinary team can put in, for example advice that they've given the patient about exercises or balance. Um, it'll um, link to referrals and appointments so the patients know what's coming up for them. Any instructions for other um, health services that might be involved with the patient when they're going home and um, possibly a medication list, although a pharmacy already pr um, provide the patients with a list of the medications and some information. Um, Casey did note that um, they will have challenges and you know these are things that um, Catherine's also pointed out, you know if the patient's um, admission is very brief or um, perhaps if they come in under another unit it can be hard um, to find the patient and there will be limited time to address or assess the discharge care plan needs. And um, at Ballarat they don't um, have a designated role for clinical coordination so the team is trying to work out who um, will be um, giving the patient the form from within the stroke team. So um, that is a pretty exciting um, 
endeavour that Ballarat Health have um, coming up in the future. Um, just to let you know that um, for other hospitals who might be interested in doing eForms, they use BOSNET and um, also IPM to um, gather the data um, for the forms. Um, so we couldn't find anyone else in Australia who were doing um, their own forms, but if you are, if you have your own templates or something, please do let us know. We'd love to know about it. And if you're happy for it to be shared, um, we'll find a way of sharing it through um, ASNEN um, so that other people can see what you're doing. I must admit I didn't ring everyone in Australia, so that would um, be a bit time consuming. But I did have a look at some other guidelines um, overseas and I um, found the um, Scottish guidelines for um, stroke management had some lovely um, details about um, discharge care plans. And um, they um, talk about discharge documents um, and they said maybe you know, they could be paper or electronic and they may include the following, so diagnosis, investigations, medications, etc. Many of the things that the Australian um, guidelines recommend as well. Now the guidelines um, uh, recommendation note that the patient discharge document should be retained by the patient as a patient held record and um, it can be used to facilitate communication with all members of the primary care team. So um, you know GP or nurses or allied health that um, may be involved with the patient in the community as well as care agencies to care, uh, clearly see um, what the plan for the patient um, is. Um, but it should also, the um, patient discharge document should um, respect the patient's um, wishes in relation to confidentiality. So the patient may not want everyone to know, um, you know everything about their stroke. Um, the guidelines um, note that there is evidence that patient held records may enhance the patient's understanding and involvement in their care. There is also evidence to show that the discharge planning increases patient satisfaction. Um, medical information given to patients or their carers should be in plain English or an alternative language if necessary and discussed with the patient. There's just some references there. Um, also from um, Scotland I found some information um, on a website um, called Stroke for Carers um, which um, um, has um, um, been developed through consultation with carers um, about stroke management and what they think is important um, for um, someone who goes home with a stroke or a carer for someone who's had a stroke. And um, the carers um, said in relation to um, discharge planning that they wanted details of treatment and results of investigations, any medications and the dose, any follow-up which has been arranged such as outpatient appointments or further investigations um, when the patient's in the community, transport, dates of admission and discharge, um, the names of the consultant and nurse, um, the hospital ward name, telephone number, details of package of care. So um, I guess um, that would be if a um, patient has you know, a case manager in the community and um, blood pressure readings. So lots of the things that are covered in the My Stroke Journey um, also. So from um, talking to my colleagues in Asnan, we had a beautiful story um, that um, arose through um, discussions about um, discharge care plans. So I've got a quick little story about um, the patient and his very fantastic discharge care plan. That's what I've called it. Um, but the story, it's a true story from Lizzie Dodd, who's from the Royal Adelaide Hospital, um, who's the clinical practice consultant and acute stroke unit coordinator. And she said, um, here's a 65 year old patient um, who the other day wrote his own discharge care plan on a piece of paper. And this included, see my GP on discharge to talk about my needs and discuss the care plan I have written. Lifestyle, lose weight by 10 kilos over the next three months. Cut out cakes and biscuits. Increase exercise by walking 30 minutes every day. Use my mobile phone app to record my progress. Stop smoking stat. Look at the picture of my brain scan to remind myself about the stroke. Stop eating so much red meat and eat chicken and fish and increase vegetables with every meal. Get my diabetes more under control. Aim for my blood glucose to be six to eight millimoles. Take my medication regularly. 
turn up to appointments with diabetes specialists every three to six months. My blood pressure is 160 on 90. My aim is for it to be 120 on 70. I need to take my meds, record my BP three times a week and write it down and discuss with my GP. I will also increase my exercise and lose weight as above. Reduce intake of salty foods and adding salt at the table. I drink too much alcohol. To have two alcohol-free days per week and only one to two small glasses of wine a day. And celebrate my wins and report back to my GP. Take responsibility for my health. I regard this as a severe warning. So I think that is just such a beautiful story and I'm so glad that Lizzie shared it with me and actually I want to give this man a certificate and a medal because it was just absolutely what we think about when we um, talk about discharge care plans. So um, I think this is a lovely story for you all to take away and think about what patients might need and what might be helpful for them in their discharge care planning. So finally, if you've got any um, questions or comments, I think we've done, we've um, hopefully answered the aims of our um, presentation. Um, if you've got any examples um, that you'd like to share with us, please let us know and um, uh, maybe possible that Pat might be interested in collecting them and um, putting them on the ASNM website. And we'll wait for any questions to come up. If anyone's typing away furiously, that would be um, good if you could let us know. Casey, if you're at hand, if there's any questions for you, that would also be terrific. Thanks, Liz and Catherine. Um, just to reiterate to those people that were having some audio problems, it seemed to be isolated just to a couple of places. Um, and the session has been recorded and will be available on the National Stroke Foundation's Inform Me site. And I suspect there'll be no issues with echo in the recording. So if you need to revisit, um, if you had significant issues, by all means um, check that out in about a week. It should be um, uploaded. Uh, and before people start dropping out, um, please return um, attendance lists to me if you could. It could just be a list via an email or using the, um, the slide that we sent you with a uh, facility to put the names in. Um, return them back to me, pgroot at swh.net. .au, that'd be fantastic. Um, and by all means, type in those questions um, so we can um, get a few answers out to you. Oh, look, looks like Bunbury Regional is typing something. We'll see what they have to say, Liz. Um, regarding, well, Bunbury asks, um, will the PowerPoint slides be circulated? Um, well, they'll be up in the recording um, that's that's uploaded to inform me. Um, would it be something that we could disseminate as a PDF? Do you think, Liz and Catherine, would you be happy with that? Yes, yeah, be happy with that. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, Ipswich note that um, in Queensland with our new data collection tool we are starting to discuss planning um, on being able to print off a care plan from this system. Um, and she says I would be, ke be keen to talk to with Casey about that. Um, so um, I imagine you've, you've possibly written down Casey's email address, so um, I imagine Casey will be only too happy to receive an email from you, Linda, um, and, to, and to follow up on any questions you may have. Okay. Um, just wondering if the yeah. Maestro journey is ready to order? Yeah, absolutely, Deirdre. The Maestro journey, um, new version of the Maestro journey was launched about two weeks ago. Um, so any orders that go in will be for the new Maestro journey. Um, so I'd suggest um, if you're not sure how to order, uh, just email msj at strokefoundation.com.au. Otherwise, if you've ordered in the past, just um, touch base with your um, your project officer in your state if you um, from the Stroke Foundation if you you need any support with ordering that. No worries, we'll send out a PDF um, to the general um, list. Um, send in your email if you like um, to me um, if you would like me to respond and send you a PDF of the presentation. So pgroot at swh.net.au. 
along with your attendance list, just indicate that you'd like um, a copy of the PDF. So that way, um, anyone who sends in an attendance list, I'll be able to reply with an attached PDF of the presentation. So that'll be great. Rehab A asks, we were wondering if there may be any stroke navigation CNC positions um, as a physician recently appointed in Cairns and would be great to network. Mm, if anyone can respond to that, um, I'm not entirely sure. We're all in Victoria, so sorry, we're um, not up to speed with everything in Australia, so hopefully someone from Queensland can respond to that one. Yep, and yes, please um, email those attendance lists back to me. That'd be great, thank you. And I'll reply with the PDF. Just scrolling through lots of thank yous and um, appreciation of the presentation. Uh, there's a question. I'm, I'm not sure if you answered this already, Catherine. I was busy scrolling through the questions. Uh, can people exchange their old MSJs for the new version? Yeah. Look, it's a, it's a bit tricky because of um, cost of getting the mm. version basically back to the printing factory and then the new version out. They get sent out from the um, um, from an external printing factory. What I'd suggest is touch base with your um, state project officer. If you're not sure who that is, again, just email msj at strokefoundation.com.au and um, look, we can discuss where to go from, from there in terms of the resources and what we can do. Great. I myself have a couple of boxes, but I'm uh, quite happy to continue to hop, put the, give those out until I run out. Um, but um, certainly um, I'm looking forward to ordering um, some of the new ones when I run out. Mm -hmm. Like, um, there's a question there from Linda E. I asked Kelsey about it in Queensland and she told me that I should use up the old ones and then go on to using the new ones. Um, saves them being wasted and um, they're certainly useful. Um, and it might just be a case of um, being patient and then using the new ones when, when you've run out. Yeah, certainly, if, if possible. Just um, in terms of the, the cost of getting things back, to um, to our the Stroke Foundation and then and then another box going out should it be certainly preferable if people can use up the old ones. Thanks, Sean, for your um, comment about the um, Stroke CNC at Toowoomba Hospital in Queensland. Um, so you've got a, an email address there as well. I'll leave that there for now. Looks like just um, something being typed by um, Rehab Acute. Um, we'll wait and see what comment they may post. And um, but it's looking like um, perhaps most of the questions have been um, put to you. Um, okay, that's a comment uh, thanking Sean um, and putting up their email address as well. So I'll leave that there for you guys to take down. Uh, it's looking like um, no more questions, guys. So just like to thank you on um, behalf of our participants and um, ASNEN for another um, uh, presentation. And um, if there's any questions beyond the confines of this webinar, I'm sure that um, if you forward them to me, I can pass them on to either Liz or Catherine. So don't hesitate to um, send questions in later if you need to. So we might leave it there, folks, um, and um, welcome you to a future session in about three months' time. Stay tuned to our um, ASNEN site um, where we'll post um, up and coming events 
and also if you're on our uh, distribution list, you'll receive an invitation automatically um, as we uh, move up towards the next webinar. And if you'd like to be on the um, distribution list, um, please indicate by putting your details on your attendance lists. That looks like about it, um, Liz and Catherine. I think I'll um, stop the recording now um, and then we'll, um, yeah, people are progressively dropping out, so.